That's what I'm talking about, man. That's what I'm talking about. That is Pistons basketball. What we saw tonight from our Detroit Pistons was Pistons basketball. Not even about the opponent. Not even about who we were playing. We're going to get into that. But that was Pistons basketball for as close to four quarters as we have seen it. For the first time this season, this team tonight looked like it could contend for the playoffs. This team tonight is a play-in team for sure. Maybe even a French playoff team, but we'll get into that more. I was very proud of what I saw, man. I was I was really proud of what I saw from these guys. Um, and pretty much everybody, except for maybe one or two guys, came out tonight with just the energy and the effort, man. I know I say, I don't mean to sound like a broken record when I say that, but the energy and the effort and the intensity, that's where it starts with this team. That's what JB Bickerstaff is trying to incorporate and infuse into this team. Defense first. He fits the mentality of what winning Detroit basketball has always looked like. And tonight again, it showed. There was a couple stretches in the game where they let the Sixers back in, right? But overall, this was the closest thing we've seen to Pistons basketball for four quarters. So the Pistons, they win tonight. They beat the Philadelphia 76ers 105 to 95. And honestly, it wasn't that close. The Pistons pretty much controlled this game from beginning to end. They, they started off a little bit slow. Um, for some reason, they came out really sluggish. I'm not really sure what was going on there, but they came out really sluggish, um, missing shots, turning the ball over, just seemed lethargic on both ends of the court, like they weren't really into the game. And then midway through the first quarter, they started to really lock in on defense and started to get back into this game, cutting into the league, because they were down early. They were down nearly double digits, four, 13 to 4. They were down at one point to start the game. And it just looked like, come on, guys, we can't come out this way against this team. This depleted team, this is the this is a perfect opportunity to get a win. Like we can't we can't come out this way tonight. This we need to come out tonight with the with the mentality of desperation. We need to come out desperate like we haven't won a game yet, right? And it, they just didn't seem to come out that way to start the game. And that was a little bit confusing and disheartening and disappointing. But they got it together. They they locked in and, and they slowly began to chip away at that lead. And because they were the better team. They were the better team. Without Paul George and without Joel Embiid. Who didn't play tonight as i talked about in my last video there was no reason to lose this game other than tyrese maxi there is no real scoring threat that you have to worry about i mean they have kelly Oubre, but he's not really a scoring threat where he's, he can just go get a bucket whenever he wants right so this was a game the pistons should have won and they won it took a little bit longer than i would have liked for them to establish control of the game but you know once they once they established it they really didn't let it go there was a stretch in the fourth quarter which we'll get into there was a stretch in the fourth quarter where they kind of allowed them to get back into the game, but they responded well after they after that timeout. They responded well and put the lead back up at about 18, 20 points, and the game was over. So I would say this was Kay's best game from start to finish as far as just playing within himself, controlling the pace of the game, controlling the offense, keeping his turnovers down. He had a couple of turnovers there in the fourth quarter. He ended up with five, but those were towards the end of the game when the game was pretty much out of reach. For most of the game, he had about two or three right so he finished with 22 points seven assists five rebounds one steal and one block and those five turnovers which i mentioned in 37 minutes so he played well he shot six for six from the free throw line four for eight from three six for 15 from the field so not great but i mean he didn't play a perfect game but he played very very well i think tonight the difference too was that you could see the look in his eyes that he wanted to win this game. He's had that look. If you paid attention, he's had that look. We're not losing this game. We're winning this game tonight. But he had that look tonight. He was aggressive all night, but he was picking the spots. He wasn't forcing things like he's done in previous games, just trying to trying a little bit too hard to take things into his own hands, right? He was getting other players involved. Um, and he wasn't, he, like I said, he wasn't forcing things. And he had his jumper working, right? He had the three ball was really, was really working for him tonight. Um, and he was just kind of getting whatever he wanted. So, was really happy to see that from Cade. He played a great floor game. Um, and we need to see more of that from him going forward. And I, and I think we will. Let's get to Jaden. So, Jaden, man. Jaden Jaden continues to get better and better, man. Like, the sky really is the limit for him. I mean, I think you guys are seeing it now more and more. I've, as you guys know, I've been, I've been, a, you know, I've been a supporter of Jaden since Purdue. I've said this all the time since he was in college. You know, and it's, it's just great to see him now playing at his strengths again. And that it's also great to see him that he has the confidence of his coach. And the defensive mentality really works well for a player like Jaden because he's in great shape. 
and he's got a, he's got the body of a defender. Even though he's going to be, in my opinion, a great offensive player as well, he's got the body of a defensive player. His, his father played football. He's got he's he's got the measurables for that. He's got long arms. He's a big six four. He's strong. He's continuing to get stronger. And he's one of the fastest players in the league from end to end. He's built to play defense. He, <laughs> he's built to play both ends, but he's built to be a great two way player. He has <laughs> he has a chance to be a very very good two way player in this league. So tonight he had twenty three points. Three rebounds, three assists, two steals, four turnovers, which once again, those came late in the game in 37 minutes on nine for 17 shooting, three or seven for three, two for two from the free throw line. So he continued to shoot the ball well tonight, man. And like I said before, he's showing that you can't leave him open. He's, I think he knocked down every open three that he had tonight. He's knocking them down consistently. And the thing about Jaden is that he's never really been a bad shooter. He's never been a bad shooter. He's just never had this many spot up open threes. Think about it in years past. A lot of his threes and a lot of his own points will be created off his own shot creation. With the ball in his hands, trying to break down defenders, step back three. Those are not high quality shots for anybody. Even Steph Curry, where he's going to make most of them because he's Steph Curry. But those are high quality shots. So the quality of his three point shots have gone up. And he's making teams pay for leaving them open. But he's fearless, man. He's fearless. There was a play where Andre Drummond got an offensive rebound under the hoop and went back up for a dunk, and Jaden tried to block it. <laughs> he fouled him, but it just shows his fearlessness. And it was a good foul because Jaden must pull free throws. So he's just giving all effort on both ends. I love to see that. I think he's going to be a very, very good two-way player. And we saw tonight a lot of his offense came off his own defense, right? He had active hands as well, right, getting steals and just getting out in the break. And just throwing down dunk after dunk after dunk and just barking. It's just fun to see. It's fun to see him really getting back to who he is, man. Playing with that fire. You didn't see that a lot last season where he was just really showing the emotion that really gets him going and gets the team going. You didn't see that a lot last season. So this season, he's really being put in position by J.B. Bickerstaff to play at his best. And his defense is being rewarded by getting easy offense. So shout out to Jaden Ivey, man. He played a great game. And he's just scratching the surface of how good he's really going to be, man. This was definitely Tobias Harris's best game as a Detroit Piston. He didn't try to do too much. He was playing within the offense. I was worried a little bit about him trying to do too much already because he's playing against a team that really couldn't wait for him to leave, it seems like. And he was getting the boost tonight, man. As soon as he catched the ball every time, they would just boo him. And I really don't understand why he got that treatment. Like, I understand last game of the, of the playoffs with Philly, you know, he didn't score. But come on, man, he was there five years, man. Like, you, he didn't, you can't judge him based off of just one game. You know, I, I know he went out, you know, on a low note, but to boo him every time he got the ball, I, I think that was unfair. I, I don't think he deserved that treatment. It just didn't seem right. But I liked that he didn't allow that to throw him off his game. He, he didn't try to do too much. He wasn't shot hunting, right? He was just playing within the offense. And one thing about Tobias that I'm noticing is his defense. And here's what I think is going on when it comes to Tobias Harris. Here's what I think is happening as far as his low scoring outputs previously to this game. And then we'll get into his stats. I think Tobias is being asked to play a different brand of basketball than he's been asked to before. Correct me if I'm wrong, right? When he was here, his first go around, he wasn't grabbing 10 rebounds a game like he is now. He had 14 tonight. We'll get into that. But he wasn't asked to be that type of rebounder when he was here before because we had the best rebounder in the world, right? We had Andre Drummond when he was here. So Drummond was... That was his job. Drummond, that was his job. That was his duty to be a monster on the boards. And he was. Tobias wasn't required to grab rebounds or to even be as active as he is on the glass as he is now. And I think that really is draining him a little bit of his, of his energy. And that's affecting his shooting, right? Um, because I personally believe, I think J.B. Bickerstaff is requiring that all these guys give max energy and max effort defensively. It looks like it was kind of bothering Tobias' offense, especially early this season. So I'm not saying it's an excuse because, you know, you got you got to be in shape, but it may take him some time to adjust to that. And I only say that because all the shots that he used to make as a piston the first go around when he wasn't asked to do those things, he wasn't missing those shots. And shooters just don't forget how to shoot. So I think he's going to be fine. I think it's just taking him time to adjust to how much energy he's going to have to exert defensively. And he's going to have to make the adjustment offensively when it comes to his offense. So maybe that means, you know, getting his offense in different ways, right? But I think that's something that he's going to have to adjust to, and I think he will over time. So he finished with 18 points, 14 rebounds. There's no rebounds again. 14 rebounds. That led the team. One assist, one block, one turnover on 8 for 18 shooting. 0 for 3 from 3. He didn't shoot from 3 well. And that kind of goes into what I was saying about the, the energy level being affected because of the defense, right? 
and then two for two from the free throw line. So his best game of the season by far, right? His best game of the season, he gave us the offense and he gave us the defense and he gave us the rebounding, right? 14 rebounds to lead the team. That's, you got to give him credit for that. We have to give him credit. But once again, I think once he gets used to playing this much defense, I think things are going to kind of get a little bit easier for him because he's going to adjust to how much energy he's going to have and how to put that to use offensively. Jalen Duran really struggled tonight, man. He was in foul trouble all night. He fouled out of this game with 10 minutes left in the first, in the fourth quarter. And he didn't play well, man. He, he only played 11 minutes. He had no points. He had six rebounds. He had an assist and two turnovers. I think for JD, it's a mindset. Because I'm noticing that a lot of his fouls are with his hands. They're not body fouls, right? They're not, he's not fouling with his body. He's He's reaching. Right one, on one foul, he, he smacked a guy in the face. <laughs> so he's got to use his, he's got to play defense with his feet. I've seen a lot of our guys getting much better with that. Like Kate is moving his feet better, right? You know, on pump fakes. Um, Jaden Ivey, same thing. When he gets caught in a pump fake, he's not jumping, but he's staying down and he's contesting and he's moving his feet, right? Jalen Duran has to, has to do that. Even Tim Hardaway, who we'll get to, he's moving his feet. All these guys are moving their feet. You got to play defense with your feet and not with your hands. When you're playing defense with your hands, it may be because you're tired, but that's lazy defense. It's lazy defense. You got to play with your feet. So I think that's the biggest adjustment that JD can make right now. He's doing a pretty good job of staying down on shots, right? He's not jumping like a pogo stick like he was before, right? He's staying down. He's trying to be more disciplined there, but he has to move his feet defensively. And also, too, the timing seems to be off on the pick and roll with him and Cade. It seems like he got caught on an offensive foul, a moving screen, two or three times tonight because it looks like the timing is just off as far as when Cade needs that screen to be there. Maybe Cade needs to give JD just one extra dribble for JD to set up. And maybe that's because JD is moving too late right when you move and you plant you can't move again and i think by the time the defender is coming around he's getting caught moving too late and that's what's causing the offensive foul so him and kate need to figure out that timing as far as with each other so that way Jalen dirt is not getting caught on the offensive foul as kate is trying to come around that screen so those two things i think would really help Jalen Duran. i'm not too too concerned about him right now i know you know you guys think he should be playing better than he's playing right now but it's still early in the season man he's still he's still a young player you got to give him time just give him a little bit of time right if we didn't get Tobias any more than four games, you wouldn't have gotten this performance tonight. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's only game five. We got the win. Everybody's not going to play great every single game. As you get more and more experience and more reps, we'll be the point of being able to put together complete games where everybody has a pretty solid game, but not there yet. And that's okay. So he had a bad night. It happens. I think he just needs to continue to focus on those things defensively. Just make sure you're playing with your feet and not with your hands. And so that way you're not caught out of position. And then also just working on that timing in the pick and roll with K because we didn't see any lob passes tonight, right? We didn't see any offense from JD tonight because he wasn't even able to let the play play out because he was getting caught for that offensive foul. So I think Jalen Duran's going to be just fine. I'm not, I'm not worried about JD. Tim Hardaway played a pretty good game tonight, man. He had 16 points, three assists, one turnover, uh, five for nine shooting, five of seven for three. He was on a heater tonight from three, man. He just couldn't seem to miss tonight. We talked about it before. We know that he's a streaky shooter, right? When he's on, he's on. When he's off, he's off. Last game against the Heat, he was on. Tonight against the Sixers, he was on. So, you know, I'm not sure how long this, this is going to continue, but we got to ride this wave while we can, right? <laughs> because he's he's playing because he's playing well. When he's shooting the ball like that, anything you get from him defensively is a bonus because he can get hot in a hurry right and defensively he played well like i mentioned he was moving his feet defensively he was playing solid defense he was playing disciplined defense he wasn't playing defense with his hands he wasn't swiping down on the ball right he was playing well he was rotating communicating he was doing all the things you want to see defensively so even though he is undersized we understand that him being a 6-4 6-5 every night he's going to be at a mismatch defensively but when he's playing defense when he's playing tough defense and when he's playing hard defense right and when he's making shots the way he is you can live with it right at least in the interim so I was really happy with what I saw from him tonight. It looks like he's starting to catch a little rhythm as far as understanding his role and what he's going to do for this team. And I'm happy to see it, man. Good performance tonight from Tim Hardaway. Malik Beasley played well, too. He had 11 points, three rebounds, three assists, one turnover. Um, four for 11 shooting, so not great. Three for 10 from three, so not great. But you can see that one thing about Malik Beasley, man, he's a shooter. He's one of the best shooters in the league. So we know last game against the Heat, he didn't shoot great. And for some reason, you know, some Pistons fans just think you're supposed to have a great game every game when, you, when, you're, when you're a good shooter. And it just doesn't work like that. You're going to have off shooting nights. And he had that last night. And that's fine. That's perfectly fine. It's going to happen. But one thing about him is that he's not going to lose confidence. 
Beasley is not going to lose confidence, and that's exactly what you want to see from a shooter. He actually took to Instagram and said, one game does not define who I am as a shooter. And he's right. It doesn't. And he's going to keep shooting, and more times than not, the shots are going to go in because they're going to be in rhythm. So, a solid game from Beast. I want to talk about one more guy tonight, and I'm saving this guy for last. Isaiah Stewart, man. I said it last game. Isaiah Stewart, man. He is showing over and over and over again why he is not going anywhere anytime soon. I know a lot of guys have talked about, you know, trading him for this player, trading him for that player, or trading him and this player and this pick for this. Isaiah Stewart isn't going anywhere, man. He's not going anywhere because of what he is. He was asked what was working for the Pistons at halftime. And he said, energy, defense, being physical, goddamn grit. That's what we're doing right now. That is Pistons basketball, man. <laughs> that is why he is so important to this team. He makes his presence felt, right? Soon it's going to be known around the league that when Stu comes into the game, he's going to fight you tooth and nail for control of that paint, right? There was a play where he and Andre Drummond were running up the court, right? And the Sixers were bringing the ball up court. And as soon as Drummond put one foot into the paint, Stu pushed him out. And they didn't call a foul. It was subtle. He just kind of pushed him. And Drummond looked at the referee like, come on, bro. <laughs> on another play, Stu was on the island with Tyrese Maxey. And he forced him into a tough miss without fouling. And Stu barked at him afterward. Man, I love Isaiah Stewart, man. Isaiah Stewart is exactly what every team needs, right? But he is exactly what this Detroit Pistons team, whose identity when winning has been built on defense and toughness, he is exactly what we need. I think he's going to be the heartbeat of this team. He may not be the floor general, you know, or the leader or the highest scorer, but he's going to be the heartbeat of this team. He just does all the little things, man. He does all the little things. He gets offensive rebounds. He defends the paint well. He's not a great leaper, but he plays smart defense. He goes vertical. More times than not, he's in position defensively. He's not caught out of position, right? He's physical. If he's not getting an offensive rebound, you know, he's he's drawing a foul and giving the Pistons another play. And that's how you earn the respect of referees. When you play all out like that, referees eventually are going to give you the benefit of the doubt, and you may get some extra whistles that you shouldn't because they appreciate that. And when you're a consistent player, when you're consistent with your play, it makes their job easier. They know more times than not, this is what they can expect from you and they can referee you according to that. Things like that are important. The little things, those little things that Isaiah Stewart does is gonna go a long way for a long time for this Detroit Pistons team. You can just see that he's settling more and more into his role and he's developing an identity as to what he's going to bring to this team every single night. And the hope for me is that all these young guys can develop that. It'll go a long way towards developing chemistry and trust, which is a great building block towards becoming a contending team. When everybody knows their role, think about the Pistons team of old. Everybody knew their role. The role may change or vary a little bit from time to time, but they all knew what their role was on that team. And that's what I hope the Pistons slowly to start develop individually and as a team. You see Isaiah Stewart setting the tone. He's setting the tone. He's, he's like, hey guys, this is my role. This is what I'm going to do. This is what you'd expect. It was even a play toward the end of the game where he fouled Andre Drummond and kind of pushed him onto the floor. And Drum didn't, and Drum didn't appreciate that, right? And, and Stu, Stu knew he was in the wrong. Stu knew he was in the wrong because this is how I knew Stu knew he was in the wrong. Because he offered his hand out to Drummond. And Drummond didn't take it. Drummond did, he took exception to that. He said, no, I want your hand. You push me, right? But, but Stu knew he was in the wrong because he offered his hand. Because we've seen Isaiah Stewart in the past when Fontecchio when uh, Jade and Ivy, when they were off of their hand after a hard foul, Stu would smack it away, right? So I could tell Stu was like, all right, bro, my bad, right? <laughs> he, he knew it was, but, that, but the point is, that's who Isaiah Stewart is. That's who he is. He's not giving you an inch, right? And, that's, and I, I love that he's setting that tone. That's going to be so, so important for this team going forward. So anybody who's looking for Stu to be traded, think again, man. He's not getting traded anytime soon. It's not happening. He's, he's important to the culture of this team, and things like that are invaluable. He doesn't jump the highest. He doesn't score the most. He doesn't run the fastest. But he's going to give you consistency every single night. And that goes a long way. Shout out Stu, man, for being a tone setter for this team. So overall, this was a fun game to watch. This was a fun game to watch. But I do want to caution Pistons fans on one thing. There was a stretch in the fourth quarter where the Philadelphia 76ers got back into this game. And had guys like Joel Embiid and Paul George have been playing... It may have been tougher to put this team away. Now, granted, it may not, we may not have been up that many points had they played too, right? But my point is that the Pistons need to continue to work on playing 
four quarters, right? You can't allow teams to get back into the game when you're building a lead. When your starters go out of the game and you're up 15 early in the fourth quarter, they should not have to come back into the game, right? So you want to put teams away when you have, you want to put your foot on their neck and put teams away. That's also a way to keep your legs fresh throughout the course of a season. When you're able to sit guys early in the fourth quarter, that goes a long way. So having to have guys come back into the game when they've been sitting because you let the opponent get back into the game is not a recipe for success. So the Pistons need to work on continuing to play four quarters. And when they have teams down, put them in the dirt. But other than that, the Pistons played a very good game, right? From top to bottom, this was a very good game. Very impressive win. Um, even though it was the Sixers without the two best players, I'm just looking at how the Pistons played, right? I'm looking at how they approached this game. I'm looking at the defensive intensity that they brought this game i'm looking at how guys are settling into their roles right guys are understanding and now you see the ball is getting a little bit crisper you see guys are moving with a little bit more intent a little bit more intention they're beginning to understand their roles and that takes time right and that's why you know i thought tonight was important because this is a bounce back opportunity against the team missing its best players so this was a game where it was more about you than your opponent right the pistons were better than this team tonight so there was no reason to lose and that's why I wanted them to come out with a certain mentality of how they want to play basketball. And they did tonight. So I got to give them credit for that. This is the team that I thought could win 35 games this season. What we saw tonight was what I thought we could see from this team. And I think week over week, month over month, you're going to see more and more of what we saw tonight. And less and less of what we saw in the previous games where we had too many turnovers and letting teams back in the games when we should have put them away. So at this point, with the Pistons getting their first win getting that monkey off their back, now they can relax, right? Now they don't have to worry about any losing streaks. Now they can relax in the sense of they can just focus on building good habits. I don't mean relax in the sense of, okay, we got to win, we're good. They can relax as far as not having to worry about how long this losing streak is going to be. Now they can just focus on basketball. Now the noise is going to be a little bit quieter on the outside, right? Now it's just about them and how they can build consistency as a team and how they can build consistency in their roles as players and how they can build consistency with their coach, right? This is what it's all about. This is the growth process. We're going to see games where they have lapses and where they have high turnover games and they let teams back into games, right? They're going to have games like that. So get ready for it. It's going to happen. It takes time to build that consistency night over night. But what we saw tonight, I think we're going to see more of that as the season continues to progress. And I think by, by the All-Star break, we're going to be a team that most teams are not going to want to play on a night-to-night -night basis. And that's why I think this team can win 35 games. I think they're going to go on a high streak late. And once they have more reps, and once they continue to grow and play together, they're going to develop chemistry. And I think they're going to end the season hot. So we'll see what happens. But this was an important win for the Pistons. And now they can just focus on how they can get better game over game. But what did you see in this game that I missed? Drop it down in the comments and let's talk about it. Next up for the Pistons is Friday against the New York Knicks at home. And the Pistons have not won a home game yet. So maybe they can build off this win tonight and get their first win of the season at home. If the Pistons play the way they did tonight against the Knicks, they can win that game. So we got to wait and see. And following that game, the Pistons have the Brooklyn Nets on Sunday. So the Pistons have a chance here to go on a little three-game winning streak after losing the first four games of the season. So these next couple of games could be very interesting. And as you guys know, after the game Friday, I'll be right back here to break it all down. Appreciate you hanging with your boy. And as always, Detroit versus everybody. Peace. Hotter than MTV in Y2K. You don't want to see but that Y2K. Breaking records set by Michael J. Bringing glory days back to the future, Michael J. He's way ahead of his time, he's got a plan, yeah. Fed off by none other than his brother Cannon. If this is more than a game, it's a passion. Why they sleep, we work it. Goals are my action. Jay, then I'll be on the way and get that put around. Electrifying through the air, I need your shot. And it doesn't really matter if you love him, like him, hate him. That boy is poison. It's a